Okay, we're gonna try this one more time. I have not much time or battery power here. Oh, here's here's my preview indicator. So anyway, um, I'm gonna film me putting some of my manga collection on my new shelves here. It's a beautiful fall day, and I figured we'd got enough like natural light in here to do this and actually look decent. So Tim built me two of these Billy uh, bookshelves. And uh, they're from Ikea. We have like the Ikea showroom here. <laughs> so this is what they are. And uh, I kind of filled them with all odds and ends at the moment, but we want to make them primarily bookshelves. So I am going to hopefully, I'm trying to tap the screen here. I haven't used a GoPro before and that's what this thing is. I'm hoping the screen doesn't shut off again. <laughs> that's what happened last time. All right. So let's see if we can get this thing running and do our thing here. So my top shelf is basically just like, you know, little figurines and things. We're going to leave those up there. And as you can see, I have uh, a great love for Digimon, particularly Yabumon, this guy here. And I have all these other guys here. I'm on a tripod right now. <laughs> I'm using my phone as like a proxy. But yeah, so let's go. I'm going to zoom in. Maybe? I don't think this thing zooms in. <laughs> so yeah, here I am. And we're going to be taking this stuff off here. This is technically a book, but we're doing mostly manga today. <laughs> I just bought this because it's funny. Uh, let's see. Let me put that down here. But yeah, I was debating whether to put this on Twitch or YouTube Live, but, you know, recording it ahead of time is fine too. So we have some books here already. The Tao, the Tao of Pooh, which is an old classic. And, um, oh yeah, I don't know if you saw me already. Let's see if I can see myself on camera here. Hello. <laughs> I haven't been on camera in ages, so there I am. I'm gonna mostly film the shelves. So let's go back down here. Okay, so this is a manga. We're gonna leave this in the section. Uh, I actually used this one uh, as part of a, a manga meetup group. So it was like a month or two ago. They recommended we buy this one and read it for the group. So that's what I did. Oh god, this video is going to be terrible. <laughs> uh, my Dragon Ball DVD collection is here. I'm going to move that. So we'll leave these books here for now. This is kind of like a show and tell, I guess. <laughs> so I kept these here too. Uh, Limited Run was having um, a Panzer Dragoon. Um, what is it, collection? It wasn't like a sale, but they they had this thing going for Panzer Dragoon. So we got the soundtrack on CD, got the game on the Switch. So it comes with the Switch keys. You got the PS4 one, which I have not opened yet. <laughs> I, I honestly haven't played any of them yet. This one's actually like, it looks like the original Sega Saturn uh, case. And then when you open it up, it has the Switch game in there, so this is an alternate Switch uh, case for that. So I have this one, and then we got this one here. When I used to play Sega Genesis, or Sega Saturn back in the day, this was one of my uh, favorite ones. There's another case, Sega Saturn. <laughs> got the whole damn collection here. And there was a trading card here. I gotta put it in a little protective sleeve. Another sleeve. Sega Saturn Panzer Dragoon. I know this is a manga video, but just figured I'd show you these since they're here already. This is signed by the person that composed the soundtrack for Panzer Dragoon. So I gotta keep this safe too. I also have it on vinyl, but that's uh, by the record player. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of the rest of the stuff down here, and I will continue the video after that. So 
So apparently the tripod has like a little crank feature, which makes it go up and down, and I was not aware of that until just now. So from now on, the videos will be been a little easier to tackle here. Um, so if you can see my this my top shelf's right there, and we got Pruar and Winnie the Pooh, but we're gonna be concentrating on these shelves down here. So if I do this. You can crank it down. If it was a little smoother, it would be fantastic. But this is okay. So I'm gonna clear up these shelves here. All right, I think this is as low as it goes. Yep. So I just have all my accessories. I need, to, I need to get a space just for my jewelry. Oh yeah, this one, Shark Week. It's one of those like dash medals that you'd get online for doing like a, what do you call that? Like a competition. So it would like virtually keep track of how many miles you walked or ran, whatever. <laughs> My grandmother gave me these for some reason. So you got aviator glasses. Some more sunglasses. But on the bottom we got all the flock characters. So I... I collect flocked uh, toys, and uh, these ones are pretty freaking sweet. So we're gonna have to get a place for these guys, probably on the other. Yeah, we'll put them on the other Calix, or not Calix, uh, Billy. So Funko Pops that are flocked are a thing as well. It's just there's not too many of them, and this is one of my favorites, the Cheshire Cat. And we got some Zoids. These aren't flocked, but they were just randomly down there. My favorite Pokemon ever, well, one of them, <laughs> besides Slowpoke. We got Kangaskhan. That came with, I think, the original, like, Burger King toys. <laughs> yeah, the Burger King kids meal. We got this guy here, Dragon Turtle. Very colorful. We'll find another spot for him. And this guy, uh, I believe he's from Dragon Ball. He looks like Eric Kira Toriyama style. And then, these are all blind bags. So these are all blind bags from uh, Target. They're just little pandas. They're all flocked. I have two of the same one, so... I don't mind it when it comes to the flocked guys. This actually came from one of those capsule, um, you know, it's a blind bag kind of a thing. It's a capsule toy. So you never know what you're gonna get. And we got uh, Kirby ones here. Uh, they got some more Kirby capsule toys, all flocked. Got some more pandas. This one's Calico Critters. Those are all flocked anyway. It's just a Calico Critter thing. Then we got another panda. All these pandas came with stickers, by the way. This is another um, Animal Crossing figurine. One of my favorites is Goldie, the Golden Retriever, but she's not in here. And then this came with the Calico Critter. Okay, we got one more Kirby guy, which is kind of cool. I love like the Cyclops looking figures. There's the little keychain version of the Cheshire Cat that is not flocked. Oh my god. This is so tiny too. So this is the Calico Critters, like, fork. I love miniatures too. Okay, so... Apparently my cat got in here. We have glass doors on this thing to keep the cat out. But she keeps jumping in here. And, uh... Actually, these are pretty too. So we got these for the new curtains in here. I got these on Amazon. I think they were like 10 or $15 for two of them. And um, as you can see here, it's holding my curtain open. But yeah, we really have a good view in this room. So this is the master bedroom of the new uh, house we're renting. Okay. Got a few more things to empty out here, then we're gonna start putting stuff in. Fruit Loops. <laughs> it's a reusable container for uh, cereal. Some random. 
the elephant dude. I sold my car, so we have extra car keys here, which I just keep. <laughs> this is my uh, first Challenger, and this is from my second Challenger. Random. Mario Brothers stuff. Let me know what you guys collect in the um, the comments. I collect like pretty much everything. These are the ceramic um, figures that they used to have in tea. I think it was, uh, what was it? Red tea or something? I forget the name of it. Targa Bomb. This stuff actually works pretty good. It's like Bengay, I guess. So that's pretty decent. Then we got this thing here. It's like a Rory Stone. And this is an actual worry stone. <laughs> I used to keep this in my pocket when I had um, pockets, but I use mainly um, jeggings now in the leggings. So those typically don't have pockets unless it's on the side. This guy was pretty cool. Um, I think he came from a blind box and I put him with my retro stuff usually. My old set of glasses, <laughs> for whatever reason, they're down here. <laughs> They're wicked. They're wicked thick. It's good they have like another pair on hand in case you lose them. Especially with me because my vision's terrible. These are clips that I got from, uh, I think it was Walmart. Pretty cool. Alright, so that's the end of stuff in this cabinet. And now we're gonna put some more books in here. Um, I'd like to say I'm gonna go in alphabetical order, but <laughs> I don't think we have that much time right now. So we're gonna start with this one here. I th if I'm saying this right, Yomeshi Pedal. It's a manga about bicycling, and my boyfriend's really into uh, that kind of stuff, so I figured I'd buy this and read it and have him read it too. So since it's Y, I'm going to put this on the bottom shelf. <sighs> then we got another classic here, Aran High, High School Host Club. It's going to go here. And then we got, <laughs> this is not supposed to be in here. Let's go next. My Dress of Darling, that's another uh, recent manga. So since that's M, I'm gonna put that on the sh second shelf. But yeah, I'm, I'm starting new, um, what do you call that, new volumes? Not new volumes, new series. So I, got, I have a lot of number ones here. And then we got Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. I think this is, the most recent one, number 12. So I'm gonna have to go back downstairs and get the rest of these. This is 11. Comey Can't Communicate, I just bought the second one of this. It's, it's pretty cute. So this is K, we're gonna put this on the, the first shelf here. So for both these billies, if you look at the top there, we have this little teeny shelf and I'm just gonna put figures on there. People tend to mix their figures with their books. I don't like doing that. So they keep it uniform. I have one, two, three manga shelves and then one for figures. And it's the same for this one here too. It's empty right now, but if you ever go to Ikea and you need bookshelves for manga, it has enough to have like, you know, the big books on the bottom and then, you know, two more and then a figure shelf. But yeah, everybody does their collections differently. I might change mine in the future too, but for now this is what's good for me. Okay, then we got this spin-off manga, Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid, and it's Elma's Office Lady Diary. This currently is on number five. I think this is the newest one. So we're gonna put that um, here. So let me crack open another um, tub and we'll get some more books here. Actually, you know what? I'll take you along with me. <laughs> so this is what I have here. We got four tubs of books and downstairs we got, I don't know, three or four more. I've done manga collection videos before, just not on YouTube. So um, let me see 
I don't typically like filming myself, but let's see what I look like on here. I'm looking at myself on the, um, what you may call it. There we go. On the, the cell phone here. So I don't look too bad, huh? All right. <laughs> we got these here. And I'm gonna pop this thing open. So these cases are actually really nice. They're uh, waterproof. And uh, it doesn't let much air in. So they got this like liner here. It's like a rubber liner. You want to get those for your book, especially if you're going to store them in a basement, which I don't recommend. Um, I don't know what happened to this book. It's unfortunate. So uh, I'm going to put this one on the shelf along with these other ones. So this is the first uh, case that we're going to crack open here. I'm going to stick this over here. And then we got this one here. Um, hopefully you can see it on here. This is also uh, moisture resistant. I would recommend these in silica packs for books. It might be overboard for some people, but for me, especially in this house, because it tends to get really damp, you want to have um, only these for books. Okay, so we're going to turn this thing around. And we'll get started. I've been trying to do this for like at least a month. It's just, it has never been the right time. And people are like, oh, just do it. I'm like, I'm a perfectionist. I want it to be like the best lighting and like, you know, quiet. We've had contractors in and out of here, you know, fixing up the place. Oh, I figured I'd show you this thing too. So this is Death Note Black Edition. Uh, every time I move, something gets destroyed and this one got a little notch here. I don't know why it looks like that, but it, it looks fine otherwise for the most part. So these are like omnibus. I think it has probably three of the original mangas in it. So that's number one. I think I have just two of these. Actually, you know what? I'm going to move this down because that's S. But yeah, sneeze. Based off the cover, it looks kind of weird, but this is actually pretty cool. It has a lot of short stories in it and I recommend this one. On the Death Note train, we got Death Note number three. This is the original manga, so you can see. It's a little smaller than the, the black edition. So we're gonna put that before it. And we're gonna take um, the Tao of Pooh and put that probably on the other bookshelf. I wanna keep it strictly manga. Well, at least on these shelves here. So we got Kramati High School, number one. The rest of them I donated to the library I work for because I, I literally had the whole damn collection. That one's funny. Like I would, I used to use read those on the train going to work and they were just, they were the best. Okay, we got Pet Shop of Horrors, number 10. They don't print these anymore, so they're, they're kind of rare. That one's P, so we're gonna leave it on the second shelf for now. Death Note number two. My battery's dying, so we're gonna do this a little bit quicker here. Dr. Slump, so that's D, number six. These, I don't think these are in print either. Pet Shop of Horrors again, number nine. I believe there's a gap in my collection, so I'm gonna have to buy one or two of these to finish it off. Pet Shop of Horrors, number six, and then we got number eight. Dr. Slump number nine. I think we have the whole collection here. So there's gonna be quite a few of these. We got eight. This is actually made by, uh, well, they were created and written by Akira Toriyama. He also did Dragon Ball. You could probably tell by the style. So the first Android is basically, what's her face? <laughs> I forgot what her name was already. Oh no, that's bad. Oh, her name is Arale. Okay, it's right there. But yeah, you can tell with this dragon, it's Kira Toriyama. Number seven. Okay, I'm gonna do a quickie here. Number 11. Number 10. Did you see that one? Okay. We got 12, 13, 14. I don't know how many of these 
volumes there are. I believe this one might be the last one we will see. Oh, no, it keeps going. Number 15. Number 16. Helsing number one. I want to get the hardcover cop copy of this. You know, like they have the Berserk ones. I, I just love this series. It's worth it. Oh, another Death Note. This one's number four. Believe it or not, yeah, I got these for 75 cents at a sale. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? All right, so this is going right here. We got some more uh, Dr. Slump and Pet Shop of Horrors. So we got number two, Dr. Slump, number one, and Pet Shop of Horrors, number two, and number three. This is a, a favorite of mine as well. So if there was a top five manga, you know, this one would be in there. I love it so much. And I think this is the remaining Dr. Slump. So we got number five, number four, and number three. I believe that takes care of the whole collection of Dr. Slump here. So we got 1 through 16. Okay, so we emptied out that. Oh, except for. <laughs> this video is kind of janky, but that's okay. This is a bookmark, so that's kind of cool. Bonus. Okay, so we're going to start this next tub right here and it's also waterproof like I said before or water resistant um, it's from a it's called a Starlight the brand so um, it's not cheap but it's made in USA so it's pretty good all right so we're gonna pull this over here We'll get started on this. This is random, don't know why it's in here, but it's kind of funny. This is a slogan they used to say on the MBT all the time. As you can see, I'm from Boston. So this one is from Rumiko, no, yeah, Rumiko Takahashi. This is the person that uh, did Inuyasha and Ranma. So we got Yurusei Yatsura. So it's gonna go on the bottom shelf, number two. This is an omnibus. This is another one that I'm trying to complete the whole collection. So we got, uh, what do we got here? Number three. Azumanga Dayo. This one's really, really funny. I was introduced um, to it by a uh, friend in high school, or uh, not high school, uh, college, like 20 years ago. Mm. It's gonna be avalanche here. Okay, we got the, the omnibus for Azumanga Dayo. I think this is a one shot, like this is the only omnibus they have. And it's ginormous, so we're gonna stick that here. Already filling up these shelves. And this is only half my collection, not even. Okay, Yorosei Yatsura, number one. I believe they're um, remaking the anime for this one, too. Well, these ones are definitely bottom shelf. We got Zoids, Chaos Century, number one. Zoids, New Century. And I think that's a one off, I'm not sure. These are gifts from a friend that knew I like absolutely love Zoids. So I'm going to put these on the bottom shelf. Oh, and 
another one of my favorites by Akira Toriyama, Dragon Ball. Number one, and this is an omnibus. Oh, here it is. Okay, we got Death Note Black Edition, number two, with Ryuk right in the front. I love that guy. The only thing they did right about the Netflix live action movie is, you know, the casting for Ryuk. I absolutely love the character. And the, you know, the actor that portrayed him was pretty spot on. So this is number four, Yurisei Yatsura. Bottom shelf. <laughs> number five. Oh, this one's, um, I think this one's super rare now too. Wolf's Rain. Um, this was only two volumes, so I got both here. It's very short, but it's also um, one of my favorites as well. This one I think is a light novel. I haven't even really cracked it open. Yeah. My Neighbor Totoro. It was in the manga section, so I picked it up. So we will put that here. It's like uh, old school. It almost feels like um, like the cover feels like a cloth kind of a thing. All right, Yarsi Yatsura, number six. Pardon my stomach, I'm like starving right now. <laughs> Doing this like before lunch for some reason. Number seven. We got Bleach. I don't think we have the whole collection because that's way too many, but this one's number 13. I happened to buy two of these because I forgot I had this one, <laughs> but I love the cover. Kenpachi's really cool. I'll put that over here. And then it jumps up to number 33. These are all over the place. That's Bleach again. They recently uh, redid that one too. I think it was on um, Disney, of all places. Yurase Yatsura, number eight. And uh, believe it or not, we are done with the second one here. So that'll give me more room to bring more books up here. So we got two more totes and we are done for this video. I might film the next one, we will see, but I just wanted to get rid of these because our room's full of totes, like there's more back there. <laughs> and that's not even books, it's just other random stuff. Alright, so let me bring those over and we will finish these shelves off here. <laughs> so if you have any questions about how I store my books, you know, what I use to store it. I already told you about the bookshelves, they're from Ikea. These are also Starlight, but these aren't the um, moisture resistant. But they weren't, I don't think they were down the cellar long, so it wasn't too bad. So another one of my favorites, Berserk. I'd like to own the whole collection, but it's very pricey collecting manga. Number one, Berserk number two. I think I actually bought some of these during the pandemic when I was down in Florida. Number three, there was a place called, let's see. No, this one's Hub Comics. There was a place called Books A Million down in Florida, and they were kind of like um, Barnes & Noble. So that was pretty cool. They also had a cafe like Barnes & Noble too. This is Berserk number five. Oh, we got four too, so we'll put them in order. Number six. We're only at 17% battery now. And I started with like 80. It goes down really quickly. All right, number seven. I'm gonna have to move some of these on the first shelf down. Number eight, still shrink wrapped. <laughs> you would think I'd open you know, the thing up and read the damn thing, but I just haven't had time. Number nine, still shrink wrapped. All right, we're gonna move some of these down because I have no room. <laughs> we'll move down Comey and Dragon Ball and Helsing. Okay, number 10, still shrink wrapped with Skull Knight on the cover. Oh, 
It would help if I put it in the right way. There you go. Oh no. Oh no, where am I gonna put this one? I don't think it's gonna fit on the shelf. This is the big, the big boy. I think I only have number one for now. We're gonna be collecting these as well. Let's see if it fits. Nope. Let's see if it fits on the bottom. So all these shelves are pretty much the same size. I believe except for the bottom shelf and it was with these in mind. Yes, and so it just like exactly fits down here. We're gonna put it right at the front. <laughs> like, it just is too tall for these top shelves, which is fine. You know, if I collect a whole bunch of the, the hardcover books like that, I will just put them all on the bottom shelf. Okay, so now we got Tokyo Mew Mew, the omnibus. Oh, we got some more bleach here too. So we got bleach number one. Number two and number three. And these are all 75 cents. <laughs> I wish all of them were, that'd be fantastic. So this shelf is pretty much packed. It's kind of crazy. We got some more bleach here, four, five, and six. In case you want to see the covers, here you go. And then we got bleach. Was it color bleach? So I think it has, you know, more information about the characters in here. And ironically, it says color bleach, but there's not much color in here besides like the first half. But, you know, I, I'm a lover of bleach, so I had to buy this. So since we have so many bees, I'm going to have to move Dr. Slump down here. And that gives us room for more of the other letters. Okay, let's see what we have here. So we'll do, let's see, four, five, and six. But yeah, this probably would have been a better format for a live stream. But yeah, if you, um, if you watch along and you have questions as you go, just write them in the chat. Okay, this one's a manhwa. It's, um, I think it's a Korean manga or Korean uh, comic. It's called The Breaker. This is recommended to me by my uh, book club. So we are gonna put this on the shelf here. Um, so BR will be right here. Doro Hidoro, number one. I just started getting back into the anime on this again on Netflix. It's pretty good. It's just like, it's very zany. To put it bluntly, uh, let's see, where are we going to stick you? We'll stick you after Dr. Slump. No, oh, maybe it's supposed to be before this DR. We'll put you after Death Note. Okay, one more left. We got one more tote. And just in time too, because the battery's almost dead. <laughs> oh my god, this is like almost a 30 minute video. And uh, I... I hope I don't have any other videos to make, at least today, because uh, I just don't have time for it. So this is another one that's rather new. We swore to, we swore to meet in the next life and that's when things got weird. <laughs> yeah, because they reincarnated. She's like a little older than he is, but technically it's legal. <laughs> uh, it's a cute manga. I might collect more of these. It's just, you know, I started with number one and I haven't really gone beyond that yet. So this is going to be under W. Oh no, we got more bees here. I have the whole Beastars collection. Actually, the last manga for Beastars is coming out in January. I'm kind of sad about that, but I do have Beast Complex, so it's not going to be too, too bad. We're going to move all the D's to the bottom to prepare for that.
Even the bees too. There's just too many freaking Bee Stars manga. So we got number five. Number six. And number seven. So that's, this is another one that's in my top five for mangas. And uh, you know, furries, I don't know. I guess that's why. <laughs> All right, we got probably two minutes left. We're gonna blast through these. Thank you guys for watching. I think my video is pretty much done. Okay, I think we're back again. So my GoPro, right at a half an hour, it overheated and the battery died, which is crazy. But anyway, so I took the cover off and I put it in the freezer and put a new battery in it. So we should be okay. Um, we got to Beastars, so I'm gonna continue with those. So again, Beastars is ending in January. I'm kind of sad about that, but we have Beast Complex and I think Paru Itagaki, the, the author of these, is working on a new project. So I'm interested to see what um, she's gonna do with that. I forget the name of the new uh, manga she's working on, but she's pretty talented, not gonna lie. We got number eight here. So this is another one of my top five manga, in case that got cut off in the last video. We got number nine here. They're gonna take up like half the shelf. Number 10. I don't have to rush around anymore because the thing was worrying me with the battery last time. So we got number 11. Number 12. They just keep going on and on. So just seeing 12, you know I spent at least $120 on this manga. Just this series alone. Oh, number 13. So more than 130. Because <laughs> the cover price on these dang things are, what is it? Yeah, $12.99. Unless you get it for a cheaper price, but it's pretty tough, especially since it's new. Um, so this is 14. Fifteen, Jesus. I don't even remember how many volumes they had. So it just keeps going. Sixteen. Oh wow. That's good. probably gonna make it to seventeen. Yep, seventeen. 18, I think this is the newest one. Um, so I believe 19 or 20 is gonna be the last one. If it was me, and if I was the, the manga artist, I would end it on 20 just because it's even Steven. Um, this one I ordered by accident. Uh, this is number nine, but I believe it's in Spanish. <laughs> As you can see here. Um, I don't know why they sent me this one, but it's funny, the, the difference is like huge compared to the, the English version. So I put those two together, it's just fun to have. Then we got Mob Psycho 100. This is another one that's great in anime. I don't like the animation style, but I think personally it's better than One Punch Man because he's using his mind. He's, he's overpowered with his mind more than his fists. And it's the same author, if I haven't said that already. So Mob Psycho, that would be M. We're going to stick that down the second shelf here. Actually, here. Yeah. So if you guys are into uh, Pet Shop of Horrors at all, they had a spin-off series. 
and it's called Pet Shop of Horrors Tokyo. I think this one might be still in print, so it's easier to get than the original one. But we have the original over here, Pet Shop of Horrors. That one's a toughie. So I'm going to stick this actually on the bottom shelf. We'll do some rearranging later, but uh, for now I'm going to put all the manga just in this bookshelf. We have the second one ready to go. So this one's Pet Shop of Horrors Tokyo as well, number two. I was over the moon when they announced that one. I was like, yes, they have another series. And it's not bad, like, compared to the original. It's pretty much the same vein. Number four. I gotta make sure I get the complete collection of the first one, because that one's awesome. I love the count and the, the protagonist there. I haven't read this in so long, so I can't remember his name. The detective. Okay, we got... Pet Shop of Horrors Tokyo number six. And uh, it's the same, um, whatchamacallit, it's the same artist. It's just a newer version. What I find interesting too is since this is so new, the original one cost $10 a volume, you know, sticker price. This one actually looks so old. It says Borders. I don't even think that place is around anymore. This one's ten ninety nine. So give me one second. I, I'm getting attacked by a spider right now. <laughs> I'm interrupting him with my video. Hold on. The thing about spiders too is you never know if they're poisonous or not. Well, to humans. And that's the thing too is like, we have a cat and I want to make sure that she doesn't accidentally eat one. She likes eating bugs and I wouldn't be surprised if she tried to eat spiders. So this one's number eight. This is the Tokyo one. Beast Stars, volume one. Oh, it looks like all we have is Beast Stars and it's pretty much over here. So we got number two. Um, I can't remember if I showed you this one already. This spider kind of distracted me. So this one's number seven at Pet Shop of Horrors Tokyo. So my collection of that series ended at eight. I don't know if that's the last one. So I'm going to actually look that up after this video because I'm curious. So we got Beast Nurse number four. And we should have... The last one should be number three for B stars here. Yep. So here we go. So if you guys are interested in collecting B stars, the collection pretty much takes up a half a shelf, as you can see here. I'm missing the the light, you know, the last volume. I think Beast Complex must be downstairs because I have those as well, but um, those will be for another video. So we pretty much emptied out four, it's like, yeah, four totes here. And uh, this is all of them here. And it filled up like the entire bookshelf here. We have some room for uh, a few more books, but not many. But again, I have this other shelf here and we'll do that another day. So thank you for watching guys, and if you have any questions or comments, or you're looking for recommendations, let me know. I uh, mostly collect older manga, but I'm starting to get into the newer ones. So like, uh, oh, actually I have a pile here. Quickly before I end the video, let me show you those. So 
So these are ones I just uh, bought the other day. This is Come We Can't Communicate. This is, again, another one I just got into. Banana Fish. This is an older uh, manga, but somebody recommended it on a YouTube video, so I picked it up. It says Vice City, New York in the 80s. <laughs> the style's a little old, but uh, it's up my alley. And then we have this one here. Love is Hard for Otaku. And the last one is, it's like an omnibus fruit basket, number two. I prefer the original one over the new ones that they have. They have a new one with the, um, the kids. And uh, it's okay. It's not my fave. It's kind of like a rehash, it feels like. So anyway, um, that is my collection right now on my bookshelf. I will update you guys probably in a few weeks with the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.